Hey YouTube world, what's going on? Mark here from TSD Industries, and we are not at the garage. We are here at the beautiful The Land Motorsports. They have just moved locations. They have this brand new building. It is beautiful, spacious. They're not only carrying motorsports, they also have some tractor equipment, some boats, jet skis, everything you may need. So be sure to check out Deland Motorsports here in Deland, Florida. Want to give a huge shout out to Dustin, Mark, Josh, Jason, Ben, and the lovely uh, counterwoman receptionist Marisol, who have helped us secure and purchase the all new Suzuki GSX 8S. Now, this is a brand new model from Suzuki. We do want to give them a huge shout out as well. They went to the drawing board and crafted this machine, and my God, it is really a sight to see. In true TST fashion, we have gone ahead and already shaved some weight and some parts off, added a few things, and we have a ton more in the works for this bike. But in short, we'll read off the brochure items. 8.8 thousand MSRP, which puts it slightly above the MT-07 and the Z650 respectively. However, what you don't get with those bikes is a bike with a stock quick shifter, riding modes, a dash that is beautiful, ergonomics that match it, and a bike with 82 horsepower and 58 foot-pounds of torque. This motor is a 776cc parallel twin motor. Now, it does come in at a whopping 445 pounds wet. This is a pretty heavy bike, but the power delivery is there with almost 83 horsepower and 58 foot-pounds of torque. This thing has power on demand. It is ready to go. And in true parallel twin fashion, it is torquey as ever. And the motor is also used in the V-Strom, which is an adventure touring bike of sorts. So if this isn't your style, but you wanna hit the trails, be sure to check out the V-Strom. We are very impressed with Suzuki for what they have brought to the table. This bike also comes in three colors. And if you're in the Central Florida area, be sure to stop by Deland Motorsports. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and get out of these guys and gals' hair, hit the road for our first ride review. I hope you guys stick along, catch you guys on the road. All right, so here we are on the all new Suzuki GSX 8S. And my initial thoughts on sitting on it, so we bought the bike, we took it to the shop because they were closing up the dealership for the day and we didn't want to wait until today to pick it up. So we picked it up and we decided to ride it back to the shop, to, to the dealership here the Land Motorsports, give them a huge shout out and um, have the ability to showcase the other three color options for this bike. And um, my initial thoughts are this is a really, really fun bike to ride. Now, if you've watched any of our other first ride reviews you know that I recently rode the ZX4R and I said that that was probably the best bang for your buck sport bike on the market and I still stand by that statement by the way however after riding this thing and again MSRP on this wow MSRP on this is 8.8 thousand US dollars an MT07 is 8.2, and a Z650 is 8.4, I believe. However, those bikes do not offer what this bike offers. An upgraded dash with power modes. You can turn traction control off or through three different uh, severities. There's a quick shifter, stock, and those alone, those, those three things alone, bump it well beyond the value of those two bikes. Now obviously this is the displacement, the engine size is noticeably bigger because we're going to a bigger motor at this point. However, the value is still there because then if you look at any other twins on the market that are comparable under a thousand cc, we'll, we'll, we'll top it off at that. You're looking at the SV650, you're looking, which is a V-twin. You're looking at the MC07Z, the Z650 from Kawasaki. This, uh, the Tuono 660 from Aprilia, 
And then lastly, the Monster 939, I believe it is. Now, the Ducati is another V-Twin, so we'll leave the V-Twins out of it. We'll leave the Ducati out, and we will leave the SV650 out. That gives us a chunk of the MT-07, the Z650, this bike, and the 210660. And I think out of those four, this comes in at the second most expensive, but it is cheaper by about $2,000. So you're getting a slightly more powerful bike with some cool tech and a first of its kind for $2,000 less than the most expensive parallel twin offering. Ergonomics, this bike feels phenomenal. Uh, the seat isn't terrible. It's actually pretty comfy. Your foot positions are in the right place. I am about five foot seven, five foot eight on a very good day if I stretch in the morning. I am locked in here, truly. My knees fall right in line with these gas tank curves. It makes me feel planted and in the bike yet again and not on the bike. This does have throttle by wire. So instead of a true throttle cable, that's something to note. You do not get a Brembo master cylinder with this, but the brakes are pretty good. I'm actually very, very surprised. And again, with the power modes and traction modes that you can adjust, this bike does give an all around great feel in every condition so far. We've only put 10 miles on it and they've been very, very loose mileage. So that's something to note. But the full color dash is a very, very nice touch. Um, it tells you your battery, your battery life, which I think is huge. Your battery voltage, we're at 14 volts. So if you're ever in a sticky situation and aren't sure if your bike is gonna start and you don't know if it's your battery, well, dash will tell you. One thing I have noted, and I'm sure you have noted as well, is if I turn the bike off and restart it, we get this beautiful little warning sign that we need to take it in for service at 589 miles. Well, it starts off at 600 and then it counts down as you ride. So now I have 589 miles to go before I can take it in for its first service. And at that point, I'm hoping that warning light goes away if don't know if it's a uh, a true mileage sensed thing or if it's as easy as Suzuki uh, hooking it up to their computer and clearing it. Now this bike does have the get up and go of a true parallel twin with a ton of torque. The stock quick shifter is very very nice. Now I noticed that the the spline in which the shifter sits on. Instead of it being a very, very frail and thin rod, Suzuki actually tapered it down. So they, they took a pretty thick one and they must have turned it on the lathe a couple of times. And, uh, and it gives us a really nice, rigid, solid feel when you are shifting. And as I break this bike in more and more and more, and we take it to the track, we'll be able to get an even better feel for how it's going to do with stress. Uh, you know, some loaded stress on the parts as we continue to ride it. But the dash is beautiful. The stock quick shifter is, again, it's very, very nice. It is up and down. Initially, downshifting felt a little clunky. But even now, after putting just 10 miles on it, it actually does feel uh, like it's softening up quite a bit, which is nice. When you have a quick shifter, uh, you don't want it jerking the, the bike. You don't want that jolting motion. So I think as we continue to ride this thing, it will break in and provide a pretty smooth transition when you are using the quick shifter from gear to gear. see that I don't know if it translates well on camera but you can kind of see the the, the jerkiness in low rpms 
Now this thing does top out at about 9,800 RPMs before you hit the first segment of red line, and then it goes up to 12,000 RPMs. We do have big plans for this bike with flashing the ECU, unrestricting, unrestricting this bike uh, from its factory settings and getting a feel for what it can do. However, I will mention, as a roughly 800cc parallel twin bike, this thing goes. Power on demand. Phenomenal, phenomenal. I, I actually really, really enjoy it. It's not overwhelming, but it is instant power that you can feel and it translates across the board. It does come stock with some Dunlops. I believe these are a dual compound tire. They will soften up quite a bit. I don't know how well they will hold in the rain, but let's hope that these thighs, the skies stay clear and the universe is in our favor today. Now we have gone ahead and removed a couple of parts as I've already mentioned. We removed the stock mirrors. We have changed out the levers for our Womatec Evos shorty levers. This is our mirror delete plug kits. We have some blue bar ends from Womatec. We have our fork, fork sliders already installed. Fender Eliminator prototypes with some new signals we have coming out. And if you noticed, those signals do have a running and brake light function. So you install them on the rear, you can instantly, with the help of our installation videos and converters, you can instantly get running light, brake light function, along with a sequential turn signal function from the company you know and love TST Industries. And if you saw the signals, you may have seen the blue accents. Those rings are optional. You can swap them out for any color. But I think on this bike, blue is going to be the winner, unless you get the black model. There are the three color options, white with blue, all blue, or just all black. And I think the white with the blue is probably my favorite. We'd love to hear in the comments what your favorite color scheme of this bike is. The blue really, really pops in the light. And I don't know if the camera will do it justice, but it really is something that catches your eye makes your head turn a bit look at this I mean and the sound even with the stock exhaust this bike sounds great I'm very excited to see what other companies like Yoshimura and Graves do for this bike once they're able to get their hands on it I do have to again just give Suzuki a huge shout out for what they've brought to the table I love seeing new models right so we saw the uh, the ZX4R from Kawasaki, first real, you know, modern small displacement inline four super sport. But they had released it two years ago in Asia as a ZX25R. This, however, this is new. This is brand new, never before uh, done by Suzuki. A, a large displacement parallel twin in a super grunty motor with a uh, naked Street Fighter style look to it. And I am very, very much impressed. Suzuki has a long history in motorsports. You know, everyone clowns on Jigsters, but they are one of the best all-around bikes. And I think that if more people ride this, this new offering, they will see and feel just we what we see and feel. And hopefully it translates to sales because Suzuki really did a soft launch with this bike they didn't really blast it out of the water and give every dealership 15 units to do test rides on and demo days and no they took a very humble approach they announced it they had it at bike week a few big bike events around the country and around the world we've seen some other reviewers across the pond already review it uh, Revzilla went ahead and did their first ride review as well. A couple big companies. But other than that, it's been pretty quiet. And I think that 
initially it may lead to lower sales than what's expected but I'm hoping that as time goes on and more people get their hands on this bike and ride it and see it in person and see the potential of the aftermarket support that not only we're providing but some of the other companies like I said Yoshimura and Graves Short Woodcraft is going to do something with rear sets um, and it, the handlebars feel great I can imagine some people are going to want to throw pro tapers on there or potentially even some clip-ons of sorts but everything feels natural and in your space and not in your face which is very nice it's not overwhelming or clunky you look at your controls and everything makes sense hazard start stop your modes passing turn signal and horn that's it no buttons on the dash which means that everything you need to do change access is all right here now there are riding modes as I mentioned and you can actually change them while you're riding which I don't know how I feel about that C is very very neutered I just changed it to C and I can instantly feel it being more reserved but if I go up to B okay so you can't change it while you're on the throttle but I think if you cut the throttle we'll be able to find out right now yes so if you cut the throttle you can change it and A is the most responsive is the most unleashed I will say which puts B somewhere in the middle and then the traction control of course you have one two three and then off so I do like the ability to change that um, right at right right here in your thumb area you don't have to go through any crazy menu settings or do anything absurd um, <laughs> I don't know how I feel about being able to change it while you're riding but it is pretty cool no way am I catching a red light not on this thing lights turning just turned yellow crack the throttle open go I like that but the suspension feels planted they did a good job on the front suspension and the rear is somewhat adjustable now obviously after we take it to the track Bart is going to <laughs> immediately notice things that he would change if he were Suzuki but he does come from a race background he did used to race for us he still occasionally races but he's a true super sport guy so even when you know going back years to our MTO3 the first time he took it to the track he comes back and says yeah this thing needs clip-ons and uh, and rear sets <laughs> it needs to change to make it a true uh, you know track worthy bike and we just had to do a gentle refresher like well they have the R3 for that now Suzuki doesn't have anything for this to match as I mentioned they do have the V-Strom which is an adventure touring bike with this motor but they haven't yet announced released hinted at any sort of sport bike offering with this motor which I'm very uh, not concerned about but I'm, I'm a little anxious to see if they do offer another model with this uh, parallel twin I don't know if that will be the case we'll just have to wait and see and I'm sure sales will translate to more R&D so what I'm saying is everybody should go out buy this bike so that Suzuki could make a race version but all jokes aside everything feels very very planted on this bike and where it should be now I did talk about the price tag we talked about the horse the, the power you know the claimed power 82 almost 83 horsepower and almost 53 foot-pounds of torque that's the claimed from the factory after we flash the ECU after we put it on our dyno we can get a more accurate reading take a look at the power curve see where we have some flat spots that we can improve and then we'll flash the ECU and really unlock some true potential on this beast. 
but right out of the factory right right from the showroom floor this is a very very well-rounded bike I am very very pleased with it I think we have to tip our hats to Suzuki because what they're offering here is pretty pretty spot-on it's pretty phenomenal now what do we have in the works beyond ECU tuning and weight TSC's uh, weight loss state or weight loss program well as you can see you know we do have front signals on these front signals we will be offering them in a sequential version coming soon so be sure to keep an eye out for that but we're gonna do a bunch of different signals see what be looks best on there now one thing to note is on the front of this bike there are two thin running lights on the side they run vertically and with our time on this bike and wrenching on this bike we have gone ahead and made an adapter that you will be able to use with our turn signals and tap into that uh, factory running light to allow a turn signal function on the running light so your signals will flash with the lights on the headlight give it a nice touch flash at the same time so they're not all wonky give you some added uh, attention bring some added attention to you while you're riding now on the rear currently we do have our fender eliminator this is the early prototype of our fender eliminator and yeah, we do have some signals on the rear as I mentioned that have a running light a brake light and a turn to sequential turn signal function all plug and play but that's not where we stop with this bike we have very, very high hopes and we are in the early stages of design for a true integrated tail light for this bike. Now, if you've seen this bike on the rear, you know that the rear of it, oh yeah, that's it. Instant. The rear of this bike does have a cap on the tail end. There's no hole, there's no mounting location. There's not much to work with to make an integrated tail light possible. But come on guys. We're not new to this, we're true to this. We know what we're doing. We've got a lot in the works. Our current fender eliminator is just a stepping stone to our true integrated tail light system that we will be developing, continuing to develop and releasing in the future. Now, if the demand calls for it, we may go ahead and do some performance driven products as well uh, after speaking with a few other companies and uh, discussing our velocity stack development uh, for the various models we have them for we may be inclined to develop some sort of intake or velocity stack system for this machine but that all starts with us taking it to the dyno and getting readings and seeing where the restriction is happening so we are pretty excited about that. Obviously, you know, we'll reach out to our good friend Luke at Koromoto. He's about an hour and a half away from us. And we'll see if he wants to borrow the bike and do some uh, R&D for brake lines. But this does come with ABS. I believe that plays into the uh, traction control as well. So ditching the ABS may have an effect. It may not, we don't know just yet. This is a true first ride review where we are showcasing what we know so far, what we're hoping to discover in the future, and some big plans. But I want to hear your thoughts. What do you guys think? What do you guys and gals think so far about this new offering from Suzuki, this beautiful GSX 8S? Have you seen one? Have you been able to ride one? Are you interested at all in this bike? What are your thoughts? Share them in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you. Drop a, drop a line in the comments. Let us know where you're watching from. Just check in. Say, hey, watching from Blase Blase USA. We'd love to hear. Say hi back. We wouldn't be here without all of our fans and viewers and supporters. So we just want to give a, a huge shout out to everybody who's helped us over the years, whether it's been with one purchase or a hundred, 
for one bike or all of them doesn't matter if you've supported us we thank you we love you we appreciate you we wouldn't be here without you and as we as long as we continue doing what we're doing and continue to get better at it we will be given the opportunity to work on more bikes everyone is always asking what's the next bike when are you going to do this for this model or do that for this model the hard truth is is that we are still a very small company we are a very small company there's a team of roughly 15 of us handling the day-to-day -day operations and we have a team of engineers that is very very uh tight-knit so we work on multiple projects at once while one project is being wrapped up another one is being unraveled and I know sometimes it's like oh why are you guys working on this when you could be working on this well truth is we can do it all simultaneously look at that we can do it all simultaneously and we love that about our company and about our supporters you guys are super patient if there's a solution on the market for something we don't offer, you're very vocal and you say, hey, I'm using this for now until you guys do it right. And that's what we strive on, what we hit for. We don't just make products. We make products that make sense. We don't just come up with solutions. We come up with solutions that are done right. We're not a stepping stone to the end. We are the end. And we, we hope you all feel the same way and, and have the same love and admiration that we have for you guys. And that's it, I'm done getting emotional for our supporters. So before we head back to the office and do our outro of this video, I feel like as always, we have to give you the content that you know and that you want. So with that said, we are going to hop on the highway and see how this bike handles at highway speeds. Now I can tell you right now, you've heard me say it a million times, I used to have an MT-07. I know the naked bike world. I know that once we hit about 75, 80, my head's gonna start getting thrashed around. I'm gonna feel the wind on my chest. That is the nature of a naked bike. But this bike is so smooth and I feel like even at those highway speeds, if I just kinda give it a nice tuck, I can actually hide behind the display a little bit and I may actually have some improved aerodynamics compared to the MT-07 or the Z650 or any other naked bike so let's go ahead we're gonna hop on the highway and see what this bike feels like at true highway speeds So that very quickly got up to 85 and almost no wind resistance. Feels very, very planted. I'm not shaking at all. Usually on naked bikes when you get up to speeds like this, even just normal highway speeds, you get a lot of chatter and a lot of shake. I'm seeing a little bit of head shake nothing too crazy it's completely manageable just remember you want to be light on the bars you don't want to fight the bars yeah this bike is butter buttery smooth i do not condone this type of riding always ride within the legal limits and your local laws however by just doing this I can tell you right now that on the dyno, in a theoretical top speed situation, we can probably see 
130 plus, possibly even more. The wind bouncing off of you and throwing you around is just the nature of a naked bike. You will experience that on any naked bike, even some super sports, honestly, if we're being completely honest. I know as motorcyclists, we like to uh, tow the line a little bit and uh, omit certain facts. <laughs> in favor of uh, opinions. This is not a paid first ride review. I'm gonna wrap up this video. Give you my final thoughts. And as always, see you guys in just a bit. Ooh, and there you have it. Our first ride is complete in the books and ready for your viewing pleasure. And if it wasn't clear in the video, I'm gonna make it very clear right now, I love this bike. I think what Suzuki did here is perfect for what it is. This parallel twin motor is thumpy enough and strong enough to where you get that instant power on demand with all the added tech features, upgraded suspension, the brakes, I mean, everything. It really is a perfect bike, in my opinion, for that naked parallel twin feel that everyone in the industry knows and loves. I think Suzuki did a great job introducing this bike. I'm excited to see the future and where this platform goes. I would honestly love to see a fared version of this bike, maybe a full super sport style build of this platform. But right now, I think it is perfect where it's at. The price tag reflects that with all the upgraded tech, suspension, everything. I think it hits that sweet spot compared to the competition, but hopefully it also pushes the competition to build better platforms that we can then compare to this in an apples to apples comparison. But we'd love to hear your thoughts. Be sure to check in in the comments below. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. What do we have next for this GSX-8S? Well, a lot. Obviously the next big thing, we're gonna take this to the dyno, get some base readings, give you all some cool dyno footage that you know and love. Then we're going to go ahead, crack open the ECU, see where we can make some crucial changes to give it a smoother response and a more uh, powerful response. And then of course, we're gonna do all the installation videos you know and love. Some big product R&D is in the works already. It has been. We're excited to see where that goes. So for now, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to stop by our social media pages, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all username TST Industries. Stop by our website, tstindustries.com. Don't forget to check out our merch, hats, banners, shirts, everything. We've got it all. We hope you enjoyed this video. We will catch you guys around the corner. This has been Mark from the TST Garage. See you next time. Yeah.